Hello everybody and welcome. Uh, this is going to be a continuation of the Express uh, Stripe React tutorial. Today I'll show you how to implement subscription payments into your application um, using Stripe, obviously. Uh, I'll, the base code will be the one from the previous tutorial, so you can just check it out in the description or you can just watch the previous tutorial and then learn how to make uh, basic one-time payments. First thing we will do is go to the front end and change the function name to handle submit pay since this will be used for only one-time payments and we want to distinguish it from the subscription payment function. The next thing we want to do is go to documentation, open the create subscriptions page and follow the docs. First thing they suggest to do is create products that we want to sell. So let's go there. Let's go to billing uh, products, new product. This is obviously test data, but yeah. So product name will be test. Unit will be, um, what are we selling? Uh, charge, let's say charge. Uh, I will just, I will actually, I'll just ignore these. I mean, they're optional. You can put something. Uh, I'll have the password there. It doesn't matter. You, you don't, I'll remove the account anyway. So, <laughs> um, <clears throat> plan nickname, uh, plan nickname will be the one used to find the plan later. Uh, I'll name it uh, test, testy, right? Testy ID will be auto generated. And then the amount will be 50. No, we'll name it. Well, 75 dollars a month is good you know it's, it's got my money it could be monthly yearly whatever we'll put it to monthly and we'll put no trial period <clears throat> we'll add a pricing plan to this product and now we have test we have the id of the plan which we will need later on in the code and we're done so we can go back to this page and follow along we need to set up stripe already done we need to install Stripe on the front end, already done, already done. We can go to step number four, creating the payment intent and the handle submit uh, subscription function, which is what we'll do. So I'll copy this function and then uh, we'll go from there. So this is the handle submit pay, we'll collapse that so we have a bit more free space in the code editor. So we'll name it handle submit sub. <coughs> We can remove this part because we don't really need that. So uh, it's going to create a payment method <clears throat> right here. So what happens is that we get the car details and we create the, the payment method on the front end. What we need to do afterwards is what they do in this function, which we will just do in this uh, in the same function is uh, they take this payment method which will be in result and then payment method and payment method ID, which is what we'll need. So we don't really need this. So here, what we want to do is say <coughs> const response equals um, await Axios. We want to make a post request to HTTP slash slash localhost 3000 slash sub, which is going to be our route. We want to give it a payload. <laughs> it's going to have a, a payment method, which will be this. And it's going to have an email, which is going to be the email. Obviously I'll put this in quotes just because generally, um, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll put this in quotes as well, just because generally it's sort of, uh, depending on what kind of, uh, Plugins you have in VS Code, if it's not in quotes, it kind of looks the same, so it's hard to distinguish what is what. So I like to put it in quotes. <clears throat> and then what we want to do here, I'll just um, console.log response.date. Right. Okay, so we send this to slash sub on our backend. We send the payment intent as well as the email. The email will be right here as well. Okay. <clears throat> so that's done. Now we want to go to the back end and do some stuff there. So what we want to do is actually create a customer. So for that, I will just copy this code and change it a little bit. So here, let's create a new post route. So app the post, then we do slash sub, we do async um, request, we want the request and the response. And then we get this. So we get the customer, the customer will create <clears throat> We'll need the payment method. So we want the email and we want the payment method that we put in the request body. Request body. There we go. 
So the payment method will be the payment method. It's just the ID as you can see here. <clears throat> and then the default payment method is also going to be that same thing. And then the email will be the email we just sent from the front end. So now what we do here is we get the email and the payment method from the front end. We create a new customer uh, with that has this payment method and this email attached to them. And what we want to do now is attach this customer to a specific subscription plan that they will be billed for each month, year, six months, a day, whatever, right? So we go back to the back end and right below this, we put const subscription. What we want to do here now is get the customer ID. So we want to say here, it's supposed to be customer ID. The plan ID is the thing we can copy from here, right there, oh, there. And then this can stay the way it is. I'll just make it single quotes. Um, because this just gives us the payment intent. The reason we need the payment intent, uh, can I get back here? Yeah, is because when a subscription does get charged or not charged, uh, we want to return the client secret and the status to the front end so we can tell if more action is required or not. And then the user can maybe try and pay the subscription again. So uh, I don't really... So I, I just opened this uh, previous uh, this code from my previous tutorial with Flask. I'll just copy these two because it's the same path, and then I don't want to type it again, right? So down here, I'll just say const. So the status is located in subscription, uh, latest invoice payment intent to status, and the client secret is here. And that is the reason why we expand the latest invoice payment intent so we can actually get the status and the client secret. And now what we want to do is actually uh, return those. So back to the back end, we want to do this like response. Now we want to send back JSON, right? We want to send back the client secret, which will be obviously just the client secret right here. And then we want to send back the status, which will obviously just be the status. I think this should be like this. So it's consistent, right? And that's done. Uh, now we can go back to the front end, which is what this part right here is. So I will copy this entire bit and go back to the front end. <clears throat> so right down here. So what we want to do is get the client secret and the status from response data. Right, uh, payment is not camel, camel case. What? Um, I'm not sure what this was referring to. Uh, oh, okay. Anyway, we don't need this payment intent. I'm sorry, uh, this can be removed and this can be removed. So, okay. So now we'll have the client secret. Uh, I'll I'll put it as this so it follows. Oh, actually, it can't be like that. So we'll have the client secret and the status, and then we'll have the client secret here. So if there's an error, we can console the log the uh, result error. And if there is no error, we can console the log you got the money. And also down here, if there is also no error, we can console log, you got the money. So that's about it. And then we can also put console log here. There was an issue. Okay, we're back. Quick interruption anyway. So what we actually didn't do here is that we here need to say if uh, result.error does happen, we wanna console.log uh, result error message else if there is no error while creating the payment method what we want to do is put all of this code in there oh that's not in there is there no it's in there okay so you want to put all that code in here and then we want to disable camel case on this line because we don't really need that right now um Let's, let's fix these trailing spaces here. Okay, so currently the way subscription payments will work in our application is uh, someone will uh, try to subscribe, we'll get their payment method. 
If there is an error, we'll console log the error. If there is no error, we'll send the payment method and the email to the subscription route on our API. Uh, that will send back a client secret and a status. If it requires action, uh, it will take the client secret and then it will um, error out there was an issue and the issue, if there was no issue, it would just console log you got money or money's in the back bank, yeah, you got money. And then we will add an on click here. Um, is that lowercase? Yeah, on click and then handle submit sub. And that's it really, we are done. So let's go uh, back to the front end right here. Let me just check the back end one more time. I think it's good. Yeah, that should be good. I just, it is, uh, I might need to restart it because I haven't restarted it. Okay, now it's good. So if we open the console, we can also open our um, billing here, subscriptions. Currently we have none. So if we close this, we add some email, sub email, oh, sub email at email.com. And then we say 42424242222222, right? We click subscription. You got the money. If we go to the dashboard and refresh the subscription page, we will see that we have a subscription that is now active under this email. Uh, the product name is test and we can see which card the person used. So we're done. Um, subscriptions now work. Uh, if they fail, we can also test that. So if we scroll all the way down, Oh, they don't have this on this page, but you can use like this card, for example. So this is like, if you want to start a subscription with a card that requires authentication. Um, it will, this will pop up. And, you know, we have to confirm this is test payment for 25, blah, blah, blah. We can authenticate and that will work. So if we go here, refresh that. It still does work. It's a, there's a new subscription and then we'll upload like number two here. And then we can also attempt a subscription that will fail because of insufficient funds. So let's do that. So even if the authentication does pass, it should fail. There was an issue. And then we'll also have like the, your card has insufficient funds. So you could, instead of console logging the entire thing, you could just console log or like take the decline code or the decline message and like pop it up and say like, payment failed because of insufficient funds, please review your card or whatever. And you can also go into the dashboard, check your subscriptions, and you can see that this user's uh, subscription is incomplete and it will be also canceled in 24 hours. Thank you for watching. Hope you know how to set up subscriptions for your uh, Express, React, Stripe application. Have a nice day and goodbye.